All right, good evening, everyone. If you can hear me, can you type L in the chat? Okay, L stands for we are here to learn tonight. And again, that's why I already put on my learner's hat. I'm ready to learn. I'm going to really improve a lot from tonight's uh, sharing as well from tonight's in that interview about how Sabrina does it. I think, I think some of you are getting very excited already. Are you guys able to hear me? I just want to make sure you guys can hear me loud and clear. If you can, can you type L in the chat? Okay, L stands for learn learner's hat okay so uh, okay love let me just disable the waiting room i can see su ling is here good to see you you look fantastic all right for those who want to switch on your camera feel free to just put on whatever things that represent you right now okay what is your your uh what's the objective or what do you want to get out of this interview if you want to become a learner you can put on a learner's hat like me if you are very cool you can put on a very cool uh, spectacles okay <laughs> it's really up to you okay i can see it. many of you have joined us fantastic fantastic now okay we just want to make sure it's recorded now all right so today okay it's a very very special session because just like i said right like many people have often ask me how to become a millionaire within the shortest time possible. Now, as much as we know that investing really works, right? That you know that if you do options, if you do uh, stocks the right way, you will definitely become a millionaire. However, we also know that that requires a longer period of time, right? So that's why if you really want to create your millions faster, there should be a different way, right? How many of you would, would love to have your millions within a shorter time possible? If you lo love that, can you type S in the chat, okay? S sense of shorter time. And of course, when we want to do that, we also want to make sure we do it the right way, right? So that we don't have to uh, bang the head, you know, bleed and end up losing a lot of money, right? We want to make sure we always do it the right way in the shortest and the most efficient way so that we can achieve our goals within the shortest time possible, right? And that's why after talking to so many successful people, right, some of them million, multi-millionaires, some of them even multi-billionaires, I realized that they really have one commonality is they really run a business, right? Because if you think about how Bill Gates does it, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, right? All of them are business owners. And that's why today I want to invite a very, very special person, right, to come here because she herself, is already a very successful business owner, right? She runs multiple businesses. She started at the age of 15, right? Her first business started at 15. Well, when most of the time, we, you know, 15 years old, when I when I think about myself, I was watching TV all the time, right? She already started her first business. And then over the years, she kept on polishing, improving her skill set as a business owner. And at the same time, really venture into multiple different businesses from uh, manufacturing to beauty to a law firm, accounting firm to right now running an eight-figure SaaS company, right, which is a technological firm. So I think that is truly, truly amazing. So that's why she has a lot of wisdom to want to share with you guys to help you uh, if you want to become an aspiring entrepreneur like she is as well, okay? So if you guys are excited to learn, can you type S in the chat, okay? S stands for Sabrina, all right? Without further ado, let's welcome Sabrina to be here. Hi. Hello, Sabrina. Wow, okay, what makes you put on that? Okay, I put on a learner's hat, right? So what's your hat today? <laughs> growth. 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 Growth mindset. So I that's why that. that is fun here. I love that, all right? So as a business owner, you constantly need to learn, you constantly need to grow as well, okay? So so thank you so much, Sabrina, for uh, really like being so generous with your time with us and come and share with us your business insights. Now, uh, I believe some of them, probably it's the first time hearing about you, right? Uh, maybe some of you probably have seen you before, right? But I just want to make sure everybody understand where we're coming from, where are you coming from? So can you share with us a little bit more about, like I said earlier, that you started at the age of 15, your first business, while most people were just playing games and all these like teenagers, right? But you you have actually started at such a young age. What inspired you to actually start your first business at age of 15? So the main reason why I wanted to start my business was that when I was a kid, right? I was a very shy kid. When I say shy, right? I mean like I would hide behind like my mom and I wouldn't dare to talk to strangers. So I... Whenever I need to buy something from a store or anywhere, right, I would just like tell my mom and then she would have to do it for me. So there was once that um, in primary school, we were writing this composition, right, about like what uh, our career is going to be like. 
So when writing this composition, I realized that, you know, because of my character and everything, right? And plus the fact that I don't really like to follow orders, right? So that was when I figured that, or rather I chance upon this term called business owner. And that's when I figured that I wanted to be my own business owner so that I don't have to kind of like follow people's instructions or like go having to go to the office. Basically, the having to go to the office part is also one of the major, major factors here. So it's a lot on like freedom of time and um freedom of self-expression, I guess, in a way. Yeah. All so right. that's why I decided that, you know, like I wanna be I wanna run my own business. How many of you are, are like Sabrina that actually you enjoy freedom in your life? At least it's you can type freedom in the chat, right? That you dislike to really follow people's order or, or most of the time you actually have your own ideas and you actually want to execute your own ideas. If this is you, type, oh wow, I can see a lot of you typing freedom, Brennan, Katie, Al, uh, Wong as well. All right, so that's for Sabrina. That inspired you, that that eager, that that drive to want to create your own freedom, create your own destiny. Um, are you able to share with us what is your first business then? Like, what can you do at the age of 15? And how did your first business turn out to be? So the first business was actually doing uh, apparel wholesale. Um, so at that point of time, I actually had friends that were a little bit older. Um, so I think like at that point of time, right, there's this, uh, there's no minimum age to do part-time work, right? Oh. And because remember I mentioned that I'm a very shy kid, right? So to break out of, you know, that 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 cycle of being shy to talk to strangers, I decided that I had to go and find a part-time job first so that I forced myself to talk to strangers. Because otherwise, I would have no motivation to do so. Um, so that's when I got to know, uh, you know, older friends. And then they kind of like put me into uh, starting this uh, apparel wholesale business. And uh -huh. for some reason, the, the reason why they, they dragged me in was that I kind of had my way on like, you know, talking to the aunties, to, you know, and the aunties kind of like, you know, by young me. So okay. they kind of like are quite nice to me. And therefore, you know, that was kind of like the itch. And in that industry itself, if let's say, you know, you're able to um, get people to constantly purchase from you, mm. um, then you have a very good market share. Because what we need to sell is basically having concerns about orders on uh, apparel, basically. Mm, I see. So actually to, to you, age was being very young at that time was actually an advantage that um, that's auntie, those basically your clients, actually pay more favor towards you because you are young. They want to make sure, oh, you now this young girl, she wants to start her own business. I want to support you. Is that how it goes at that time? Something like that, yeah. Because because I think also, uh, I have this very low threat look. So <laughs> they kind of like, don't feel as if, you know, I will kind of mm, oversell them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Um, I think that was one of the advantages as, and that was one of the main reasons why, you know, they brought me in for it. Because when we were doing in the, well, when we were working in a part-time job, right, um, the supervisors tend to be a little bit nicer to me just because of, you know, how I look and how I talk, I guess. I see. So it's your, I think the friendliness, the authenticity that also give you another advantage, right? And probably oh. the shyness. <laughs> the shyness. Yeah, yeah. You used to be a very shy kid, which I think definitely you have transformed over the years. Now, how did your first business eventually turn out to be? Was it successful? Like, like how did it go? Okay, to be very frank, the business was actually doing very, very well. Um, Because it's actually very, it's very regimental. You know, in the morning, we go and take the stock. Then after that, you know, we set up the store. Then after that, you know, um, the people will come in. Then we take the orders. And then after that, we send it over to them. So it's it's very regimental uh, process in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, but, okay, so you know like how salespeople get commissioned, right? And because uh, a lot of people, most of the customers like to order from me. Um, at the end of this journey itself, uh, it didn't quite turn out that well. 
Mm. And there was, you know, when you're younger, people tend to get jealous and all. Um, so they kind of like kicked me out of, of the business, you know, after a couple of months. Okay. So they kicked you out after a few months, even though you did very well. Yes, I know. It's a very strange thing, but yeah. They kind of kicked me out of the business after a couple of months. Were you feeling very sad at that time and, and feeling rejected that you put in so much hard work and end up you still got kicked out? I think it's a little bit of mix Um, because it was the first business, right? So it was more of exploring and it was very good experience for me as well. And I think the fortunate thing here was that while there were some people, uh, because the group was quite big, um, hmm. While some people, you know, wanted me out, there were also a few people that really had my back. And in fact, one of them is currently, you know, uh, still my business partner for over 20 years already. Wow. Okay. So it's more like during difficult situations like this, you really identify who are the people that you can work long term with. Like, like, and at the same time, who are the people who actually, um, probably just for a short while, it's like, huan nan jian zhen qing, uh. it's like during difficult period, you actually see the true color of the person and the true relationship. Is that correct? Something like that. Because I think through hard times, right, then you can really identify who are the really loyal people and people that will have your back, you know, when you're down. While, you know, some people are more superficial in that sense and, you know, mm. they were just like, pass you by uh, when you're down. I see. Uh, over here, our audience here, how many of you have actually started your business before or right now you're running a business? If you are, can you type B in the chat, right? So uh, if you have any questions, right, during this uh, very special interview, feel free to also leave your question inside the chat. I think after I go through majority of my question, I would also love to have a Q&A session so that you can ask Sabrina some of your business questions as well. Okay, I can see Sulin is running your own business. Uh, yeah, so feel free to, to type down your questions if you have, all right? And now, uh, after that, right, um, I understand that when I was searching Google for information, most business actually tend to fail, right? <laughs> Within the first few years, right? So, so for yourself, uh, after the first business, which was actually a success, but actually eventually kind of fall apart, what other business do you actually have failures as well so that we know what can we learn from that? I think the definition of failure, right, is uh, quite subjective as well. Um, mm. But definitely I have, I have quite a number of built businesses. I think the one that um, I have the strongest memory of was one that I spent a lot of time on. Okay, technically it's not really a fail fail, mm. but more of like um, it could have done better. Mm. And it failed also in a way because of mm. uh, misplaced trust. Misplaced trust. Misplaced trust, correct. Yeah, so I think... um when it comes to failure, right, it's always about, you know, um, if let's say you're working with partners, you know, um, whether in the first place, the partners that you're working with, is it partners that you can work with to begin with? Mm -hmm. uh, your, your, your missions, your visions, are your goals even aligned? Your objectives, are they aligned? Mm -hmm. And of course, if they are trustworthy or not. The, another reason why businesses tend to fail is also a lot of um, paid up capital being put up late up front and instead of focusing on actually growing the business first. That's why I tell a lot of my students that, you know, um, always try to launch something first. You don't have to do it perfectly. Just launch the model, the concept first, get feedback, uh, get feedback from the market, then from there, make your adjustments to it. Mm. Don't throw too much money in building the product first and then end up, you know, you have to change the entire product. Because that was also one of uh, the mistakes when I was building up a tech firm. The, the first few tech firms that I was, uh, was building up, um, mm. I actually spent a lot of money actually building up the technology. But mm. in the end, when we actually launched, right, we weren't able to actually gain traction. So at the end of the day, right, you could have made, uh, built or developed a a perfect product but it might be perfect to you it might not be perfect to you know your target audience and I think the third one is identifying your target audience because the thing here is that um, different sets of people or different sets of age groups or uh, industry of people 
uh, have very different ways of reading a message or understanding a message. So mm. whenever you start off, right, it's always good to target one one group of people first before you target the other groups. So that's why they always say, you know, like focus on one thing in a business. I think uh, focusing on the target audience is one very important uh, element because how I will speak to someone that is in their uh, 50s would be very different from someone that is in their 30s or in their 20s. Hmm. So basically, it's don't be greedy. Don't try to target everyone, right? Because there's a saying, if you try to target everyone, you are targeting no one. Is that correct? That okay, you want to make sure you be specific about certain target audience that you're trying to get and whatever marketing message, whatever materials that you want to come across, you know, uh, from your business, it should be speaking to them. Is that correct? Correct. And it, I think it's a lot on budget as well. Because if you have a lot of, uh, you, you have a lot of capital to spend, right? Then of course you can have different um, landing pages, different uh, packaging for different age groups. Mm. But I think that it is always good to first, you know, focus on one group, understand the group, and able to convert the group properly before you actually move on to other groups. Then that will actually save you a lot of time, money, and effort. So my question is, how do we know who is our target, ideal target audience? Like most of the time, is it usually better to start to imagine that we ourselves is the first client, then we write our message that appeal to us? Would that be easier to people who want to start their own business? You can actually try that. Yes, correct. Yeah, so I think um, it also depends on what kind of business you want to run. So if you're running like a passion business, right? Then of course, you know, you it would be more tailored to yourself and then you try to target people that are similar to you in that sense. Then as you broaden out, you first understand, do more surveys, you know, talk mm -hmm. to more people and then kind of like cave, uh, adjust the messaging to the different audience group. Mm, I see. So so it's still good to be focused first. All right. Uh, okay. I, I, I'm learning a lot because I'm also trying to find my ideal target audience over time. So yeah, I, I think it will be easier for me to write something that resonates with me, especially mine is really about true passion, right? True my passion, true investing. I hope to inspire more people to start investing the right way. So actually at, at the end of the day, to me, it's like, I'm trying to target myself. So if I write something that targets myself, maybe I will appeal to other people who have the same dreams and wants uh, as me as well. I, I, am I understanding it correct as well? Correct. Right. Yeah. So because I think like uh, whenever you start um like more towards doing passion businesses, uh, um you will always the problem that you see right would actually be very individualistic mm. or rather very tailored to yourself. So that's why that will generally be your first audience group. Mm. Um, but it's also some other kind uh, wait, other other businesses right actually tailor to what the market needs. Mm. And that would mean that they might not actually be tailoring to themselves. Like, for example, if let's say, you know, you know that um, like now, you know, property prices are, are really, really high, right? So is there other ways of which, you know, you can use um, your property to make more money? So it might not actually be targeted to yourself, but to people that have this have the demands. Have yeah, the correct. So it's a demand supply thing. I see. Uh, I think Suling has a very good question, right? Since you're so experienced with running multiple businesses, would you recommend to do one business at one time or can we as Asian women have it all? I love that spirit. <laughs> can we have it all? I think ultimately you can have it all because um, running a business is actually kind of like a, it's, a, it's like a blueprint, it's like a formula, it's a, it's a process. Running a business is basically, you know, like there is a few steps process and as long as you, you follow these processes, right, it will give you a certain level of results. The, the results may vary, but it will give you a certain level of results. However, right, if, yeah, like a, like a food recipe. But it's not ideal if, let's say, you're not experienced to run too many or run more than one at one point of time. You should only think about doing something like that when you kind of have already one that you are, that you kind of like a doing well in and kind of understand the formula already, then you can kind of like diversify. Mm. Yeah. Like that thing actually, if you think about it. That's true. It's like, if you know how to analyze a stock, the research process 
it's too capable to any other stocks. However, right. for that to happen, you need to make sure you really understand how to analyze one stock first. Is that what you mean? Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that logic is the same because the stats are generally the same, just the industry and target audience and the product is different. Okay. I love that. Because like whenever I talk to Sabrina, right, like she is very good at systemizing all her different businesses. So many of her businesses actually don't need her to be involved in the day-to-day -day operation at all. She's more like, like just going there once in a while to do consulting, making sure that the business running the direction is correct. But most of the time, she is not involved in the operation. I think that is really true freedom, right? Because you don't want a business to run you, right? You run your own business. You create time with business. So for that to happen, I think uh, Sabrina took time to systemize the entire thing and she duplicated the same formula again and again to multiple businesses. A am I understanding it correctly? Correct, right. yes. Mm. All right. So the next question is, um, some people are asking about uh, in terms of uh, like for people who aspire to start a business, right? How many of you are aspiring entrepreneur? If you are, can you type A in the chat? Okay, A stands for aspiring. Then you want to start a business, right? Very good. I can see Katie. Uh, I can see some of you probably are typing Wong as well, right? So I think the next question is relevant to many of you, right? Including uh, a bigger council actually asked this. So what do you think about freelancing instead of starting a business first? Okay, I think the definition of freelancing, uh, it actually depends because technically when you start a business or you do freelancing, right, it's kind of similar in a sense, if you're doing like a service-based industry. Mm -hmm. So in a service-based industry, whether you call it freelancing or you call it, you know, like speaking or, you know, like starting your own consultancy firm, um, it's actually the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. So there, I, I don't think there is an issue about it. However, I think one of the difference is that freelancing compared from comparing to like actually starting the business is actually the processes and how involved you are in it. So freelancing would be more of you doing a task. Mm. Whereas you starting starting a business is that you can actually automate certain tasks and kind of like source out certain tasks. Okay. So yeah, we just suggest people to at least go through a certain period of time freelancing. That means they kind of go through the entire processes, learning what things that they enjoy, what things that they don't. So in order to make it work, and then eventually they can maybe automate certain part that you don't like, that they don't like, uh, or maybe outsource that part so that they can eventually run it like a business. Would you recommend that? Yes. So if it's a service base, then yes, I would say that that makes sense. Correct. Mm, okay. So it's okay to definitely go through the process process of freelancing because at the end of the day when you're a freelancer people engage you they uh they definitely like you as a person or maybe they feel that whatever work that you deliver is good that's why they engage you right so you are already branding so-called yourself or your company as a business right you just want to make sure you continue to have more customers engaging you then eventually you can outsource certain part, automate certain part to run it like a business. Yeah, so hopefully that address uh, Kamsion's question as well, right? If you if you want to, Kamsion, you can even be more specific, like what exactly is the industry that you're looking at, then Sabrina will be able to give you more insights. Now, my next question is, uh, recently you launched another business, right? That this business itself already generated over a million dollar, right? Uh, USD in less than one year. Are you able to share with us what exactly is that business? Uh, how does that business model work? And um, why do you think it's a very powerful business? Okay, so I actually started um, the Princessa Academy. And that's kind of how I got to know you as well. Um, so the basically Princessa Academy, right? I launched a flagship program called Royal Launch School. So it was actually, a, a, it is a, a digital program. Uh, bringing you through the journey of uh, conceptualizing your project, launching it, and then after that, automating it. Mm. So the entire process is kind of like a, a guided process, uh, a guided digital process. So you actually follow the system and go through the worksheets um, and kind of like uh, launch your project uh, following that guide. Mm. So the process of building this, right, um, actually took 
a lot of um, exploring other people, how uh, people do things. So most most times, right, people join uh, other academies or other uh, programs, right, to kind of like understand how to do something. Um, for this case, I actually joined um, different academies to see what I wanted for this business and what were the uh, problems of other people that is in the similar trade, what problems they were facing in the business itself and was it suitable for me. So it's actually more of me trying to find a fit for myself, how I wanted to run it. And at a point of time, the reason why I, I even launched it the way I did was because um, I was looking for something that didn't require me to be there uh, all the time. Because prior to that, I was running the Martech company, right? And I and we actually had a lot of employees and we had I had to constantly do a lot of training and it was um it was actually taking up a lot of time. So this time round when starting this, right, I wanted to kind of like reduce the liability, so to speak, because you know, a lot of employees need a lot of training and a lot of salary giving. Um so I wanted to reduce that liability and kind of keep it very lean so that you know, I can really, one thing is understand the ground. The other is also have more freedom for myself. Um, and that's why the entire program uh, was, is actually automated. So when the customers come in, um, the entire flow of the system is kind of self-guided. So you mm -hmm. go through the entire program on your own. And we only have like... Uh, Initially, we had weekly uh, webinars. Then after that, it became monthly. Mm. Yeah, so it was a very... Basically, the business itself is very automated. Very hands-off. It's very hands-off, yeah. Because most, um, most of the uh, videos are all pre-recorded. Yeah. And because at the start, I did a lot of live sessions. So these live sessions were all recorded, edited, and uploaded as resources. Yeah. So as as the libraries builds up, you don't need to record the same thing again and again. Correct. Exactly. A new students enroll, they can go to watch, learn at their own pace, and and still get the 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 exact same effect as as if they're watching it live at the same time because it's all all being recorded. Correct. And I think one thing that motivates me a lot is actually um, you know, like aspiring entrepreneurs when they have that. The energy, you know, the, the spark that you see in a person, right? When they just started their own business, right? They have this super high energy feeling. So that's, um, so during this program itself, at any point of time, like you feel as if you need a little bit more guidance, then you can actually book a call with me and then I do a one-to-one -one with you. Mm. So that's how you also feel a lot of satisfaction, able to guide aspiring entrepreneurs on the right path and help them to get results faster. Is that correct? Correct. And um, there is a slightly different goal at the end of this entire process is mm -hmm. that um, ultimately I'm actually looking to invest in potential companies and let, you know, like, you know, like when you hire people, right? When you hire, when you hire people, there's this new saying that, you know, they will go Gen Z on you. <laughs> so you cannot really keep them. But if you run, uh, you run a investment firm in some sorts, with many founders running their own passion businesses, right, and you supporting them, right, these founders are not going to Gen Z on you because this is their baby. So ultimately, I'm also looking on, you know, like helping these businesses develop to a level of which um, I can also come in as an investor uh, and be, and, you know, kind of like build up my retirement fund at the end of the day. All right, so give, to give you guys some context in case you don't understand what do we mean by Gen Z on you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very Gen Z language because generally Gen Z people are, they are they are more, I think, they enjoy freedom so much. So whatever things that I think currently a lot of companies they face that is if the, the employees are not very happy, if they're Gen Z, they might just quit on you, right? They may make quiet quit. They don't really give up their best. They just live by their day, right? That's called like, like like the characteristic of Gen Z, right? So they will quit or do whatever that they want. So uh, what Sabrina is saying is, if you are, if she is nurturing an aspiring entrepreneur who want their business to be successful, and eventually she became an investor of that company, 
and the founder is so driven to make his or her vision to come true, then the founder will definitely work, work, work very hard. Agree? Because that's your business after all, right? And so as an investor, she's also very happy because you know she knows that as she continues to guide them, uh, these founders will continue to make bigger and better, right? The business be become bigger and better and her return as an investor will also accelerate over time. Is that correct? Correct. I mean, like, imagine if, you know, one of you, one of the people here today, right, start their own business and then they eventually become the next Apple. Oh, then you basically roll in dough, you know, 20 years from now, not someone that you actually helped uh, actually made it. Yeah. And I think this mindset, it's very much like Buffett, right? Because at the end of the day, Warren Buffett, he acquired businesses. Uh, the best that he wants is actually he buy this business and he never have to sell it, right? And he want to buy out the entire company. So that's what Berkshire Hathaway is famous for, right? So so I think the mindset that how Sabrina runs a business, how she thinks long-term is like, like, like how Buffett wants to acquire multiple businesses in the uh, in the future. <laughs> okay, so uh, Kim Seung said he lived in Malaysia, so he planned to build durian instead of apple. Wow, wow, durian is definitely a very good, very uh, yummy business. <laughs> Many people love durian. <laughs> okay, so now my next question is, um, then do you think just now the business model that you just mentioned about that uh, I think I believe it's more like in coaching business, uh, coaching on aspiring entrepreneurs to to become better in their own uh, business. Do you think this business model like coaching is suitable for everyone? Uh, if not, if people are not aspiring to be coaches, right, running a coaching business, what kind of business uh, do you think is viable? I think coaching is only one of the many different kinds of businesses. Mm. Um, in fact, I think anything can become a business. Like, literally anything. You could, mm. like, um, I had a friend that, you know, like, fidgets a lot. So he ended up, you know, um, going to scout for, you know, like, those fidget toys. Oh. Okay, and then he made, he made so much just selling fidget toys. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no joke. Like, he literally bought ordered the fidget toys and then started it selling it on marketplaces and it just sold out like that. So, wow. yeah, so it's not just like coaching per se. I think um, when when I was doing mine was more of because I felt that uh, it was aligned with the things that I was already doing and it was something that I enjoy because I like that, that energy that, you know, like young entrepreneurs or, or aspiring entrepreneurs uh, give me. Mm. But there is also other opportunities like, you know, like fidget toys. You know what the fidget toys, right? Yeah, you yeah. That means that you huge. always need to touch something, you know? Yeah, correct, correct. And huh. I think that one, he did more than a couple of millions, actually. A couple of millions selling yeah. fidget toys? Oh my yeah, God. And that one toy is like, I don't know, like a dollar fifty or two dollars. Oh my gosh. So it's so very, very well. So it's really not about what exactly it's the... So I can see actually your friend is trying to solve a problem after all. He's probably trying to solve his own problem, problem. first because he fidget all the time. So he's looking for solution. And then from the solution, he found it's useful. He was thinking, oh, could this problem be faced by other people as well? And he eventually market this. And there's so many people basically face the same problem, become his customer. Right? right, so yeah. at the end of the day, I think whatever business that you are intending to start, think about the problem first. Can everybody type key in the chat? Right, so I think what Sabrina shared is very, very insightful. That we don't need to think about there's one size fit all kind of business model because there's no right. Any business is possible. All you need to do is making sure that you identify the problem first, and ideally, I think that problem is something that you are passionate about solving. Right, because Sabrina, she is passionate about coaching entrepreneurs. She enjoyed doing it. And that's why she started a business coaching people how to do it, right? And Sabrina's friend just wants to get rid of his fidgeting problem. And he's passionate about it. And that's how he made multi-millions from it. So, so um, that's why turning your passion into fortune is doable. You just want to make sure you find a suitable model that's relevant to you, that solves your problem and at the same time help other people, right? So very good. Now, uh, then... 
how do you think that people can understand themselves better? Like, like because there's no one size fit all kind of business. Um, how do we better gauge whether, oh, should we consider this business? Should I consider that business? What's your advice for that? Okay, so that's the thing. Um, I think that there different people have hmm. Or is it more like actually finding out about passion first? How does that go? I think it's about finding out number one, you know, your passion, your own problems first, and then after that your own strengths. So mm, strengths. Yeah, I mean in the program that we kind of like develop, right? It's, uh, at the start it itself is actually to help you understand more about yourself. As you mm. are answering the questions, right? Generally, as people answer questions, they kind of understand their, themselves better. And that's when you can kind of like figure out, you know, um, is this the, the, the path for you? Mm. So it's very important that like um, your passion, right, has to somewhat also align with the strengths that you have and also understanding like the weaknesses that you have. Mm, okay. And we should be delving into, if you talk about strength and weakness, right? A lot of people were saying that, okay, I got to improve on my weakness. If I'm bad at this, I should work on that. What's your take on that? Oh, um, actually I do a little bit of opposite. So if I know that this is my weakness or rather if I know this is my strength, I will double up on my strengths. And the weaknesses, right, I either find a partner or I find someone reliable to handle the weakness. Because the thing here is that you need a lot more time um, to kind of, kind of work on your weaknesses. But that means you're spending so much time doing something that you don't like to do in the first place. Mm. So why not kind of focus on your strengths first and get really good at it before you kind of like go and, you know, figure out the weakness part. Mm, I see. So it's really about, that's how you also make the entire process more enjoyable, right? Because you're focusing your strength, you're enjoying what you're doing anyway, right? And at the same time, uh, you just keep on doing it and that's why you find joy, right? On the other hand, if you keep on focusing on weakness, you're, improve, you're trying to improve on weakness, which is going to be a very painful process. And end up, you kind of feel like, oh, oh my God, I don't like it at all. And you stop doing. But actually, if you just do the opposite, your entire business journey can be so much more fulfilling. Is that correct? Correct. And I think it's also about time. Um, It takes a, a lot less time for you to work on your strengths and make it even better. Than, and it takes a lot more time to actually overcome your weakness to make it decent. And we're not even talking about better, you see. We're talking about just business. So you might as well spend, you know, your that the same amount of time and then work on the strengths and then be an expert in it. Then after you are an expert in it already, then focus a little bit on your weakness. Yeah. So Paul was saying that sounds like a Gallup strength finder. Do you use this kind of test for your own for yourself or your for your business partner or for your team members? Uh so we do a lot of different tests a lot of different quizzes to kind of like find out you know like uh, especially from like for my employees when we hire right we will do like your standard your mbti your disc your enogram just to kind of understand a little bit better on um, the characteristics of the employees and where they excel better at so when doing the program itself we also have a lot of quizzes um just so to better to help the person understand themselves and also to help us understand so sometimes, right, um, people tend to uh, tend to be a little bit delusional about mm-hmm. their strengths and weaknesses. Okay. And they kind of, maybe because they are very aware of the weaknesses and putting in so much effort to kind of uh, correct it. The, the no. weakness portion, it kind of, they kind of start thinking that that's their strength. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Which is, Interesting, yes. I see. Okay, so that's why using this kind of test, it's more like really finding a more objective way of um, be self-aware, right? Rather than using our own preconceived lens, actually using this test actually help us to find ourselves better. Correct. Yeah, and from there, we focus on improving our strength and 
outsource and or find partners who to complement our weakness. So talking about finding partner, right? I think uh uh Kim Song asking a question. So if he is an introvert, should I go and find an extrovert business partner? I wouldn't say introvert and extrovert. I think that is not strength or weakness. It's yeah. Not, yeah. Because I have seen many introverted people that are very outgoing mm -hmm. and sociable, whereas there are also extroverted people that are actually anti-social and, and kind of quiet. Okay. So I think at the end of the day, it's not about uh, being introvert, extrovert. It's about, once again, your strengths and go and find out that and then uh, see what is your weakness and go and find the other person who is good at what you are weak at so that you complement each other. Yeah. So maybe I give a, a, a easier ex example here. So let's say, right, I am um, I'm a very tech-oriented person. Okay. But that means I'm a very product focused person mm. and but I'm generally not a very sociable person so my weakness would be that doing outreach and you know uh, networking would be my weakness so mm. I would find someone that has a strength in that element to kind of like complement my strength in doing technology for example mm, I see yeah that's why Sabrina find me <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> yeah so this is chloe uh praising myself being very good <laughs> i'm not i'm just kidding but i do enjoy like like meeting people learning from them and i learned so much from sabrina while working with her for the past few months actually we are working on a new project together uh we'll be sharing with you more about this new project later on as well so stay tuned till the end all right so i know there's still certain questions coming i love that all right so while we answer some of your questions continuously let me just continue to ask some of the questions um Yes, I also want to learn from Sabrina. So for yourself, right? Like, um, like just now we talk about uh business. Some people are actually thinking about starting it, but do you think actually business is for everyone? Um, how do I know whether do I have a cut to be good to start a business? Do you think about it or you just start? Do I think about it or just start? To be honest, I just start. Is I think that um okay remember I said that um I always advise the students to kind of like launch it first then after that figure the rest mm. later mm. so the thing here is that you can sit there and then you keep thinking and thinking and thinking about it right and then at the end of the day you can kind of like come up with the most to you the most impressive project or product. Mm. But the thing is that if let's say you talk to the next person and the next person doesn't even understand, you know, your 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 product, then you are not able to sell it. And if you're not able to gain any traction from it, then your business is not going to work out. So it's easier if let's say like you have an idea, you know, do out a simple landing page, send it out to a few people, talk to a couple of people, um, talk to friends or, you know, like go on social media and talk to random people and then get feedback from them you know there are actually nice people on social media they're not all nasty mm. um, and from there it would actually give you a better gauge of whether you have actually market share or not mm. yeah so if you are if you're saying that whether like you know is is this business for and every everyone or anyone um i would say yes because the thing is that in today's modern day right um the chances of us being farmers and hunters are not going to be very ideal. So we will definitely need to have, you know, some financial means. And the the fastest way to grow your, uh, your initial pot of gold mm. is actually like you know running a simple enough business. Mm. Grow your pot of gold and then after that start investing. Yeah. So so now comes comes to a very important question that Wong is asking, right? Like if they have a full-time job, nine to five, right? Um, what's your recommendation for that? Like, how do they build a stream of income while working? How do they start a business while working? Are there any um, personalities that required to be successful in the business? Uh, 
uh, I mean, one trait for sure that you probably would want to have is um, the eagerness to make money. <laughs> I think one thing for, um, like, okay. That's true. A <laughs> common <laughs> trait for most, you know, successful entrepreneurs is at the end of the day, they like money. They like to make money. And therefore, you know, they'll think of means and ways to, to do it. It could be, you know, like doing more sales. And business is also kind of about doing sales. Um, as for the part that, you know, if let's say you're you have a full time job. So when I started off, I had full time school. <laughs> so I still had it's basically how you plan out your time. Because mm -hmm. a full time job basically takes you uh takes up like eight eight to nine hours of your Mondays to Fridays. Um, but in a day you have kind of like sixteen 16 hours in a day that you are kind of like awake. Um, if you're doing a side hustle, you can probably spend like two to four hours working on a side hustle. Mm -hmm. And if you are doing a side hustle that you're actually passionate about, um, you wouldn't actually feel as if that it is um, eating into your time or your free time because you are actually enjoying it. I mean like, you know... It becomes your hobby. <laughs> yeah, correct. It becomes like your hobby. Correct, correct. Exactly. Yeah. So I think like what Sabrina is saying that firstly, you must be, because if you want to do a business, you must be eager to want to come and learn, right? And at the same time, eager to really want to make money. Because if you don't want to make money, then you're contented with what you have already. Then there's no need for you to do anything else, right? You just continue to do what you do, right? However, if you actually aspire to have a, a better life, right? Or you aspire to just create more wealth for yourself, for your family, then that could be the the first intention to want to start a business, right? So how many of you enjoy making money here? If you enjoy, can you type dollar sign in the chat? Okay, just want to make sure uh, you guys are on the same page. <laughs> I can see Katie has tons of dollar sign. Okay, I love that. Okay, Sabrina love that. that <laughs> okay, this is a dollar sign competition right now. Okay, I love that. <laughs> so, so now the second thing is, um, yeah, I think like Sabrina is very being very honest with you guys, and I, 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 I hope you guys don't mind, right? And and just really learn to be resourceful because only when you want to create more wealth, then you will have the mindset to be want to be resourceful to how to create more wealth, right? Be with the why you have the how, and then the what is just what to do with your business to make it happen, right? And I think that eagerness to be um like going through certain period of time that you literally need to side hustle, right? So for example, if you still remember before I quit my job, I also side hustle, right? I do many things at the same time. And would you ask me that, is it more tiring or not? I felt that it wasn't tiring for me because I really enjoy what I do. And I think that's what Sabrina is saying, right? If you're passionate about what you do, you wouldn't feel like it's work anymore. And that's what Warren Buffett said also, right? You find a job that you love so much that you don't feel like you're working, right? And that is the best job on earth, right? So if you are able to, uh, while in the process of finding that perfect job or start your own business, maybe your business actually become the perfect job for you. Then eventually you can quit your full-time job to do full-time in your own business and and have more exponential income growth from there as well. Yeah. So, okay. So now the next question I have for you is uh, some of your students, right? You have been coaching them from, and a lot of them are from different walks of life. I remember there is a beauty, sal uh, beauty salon owner. Uh, there's also a, a, a lady who teaches about uh, qi men, uh, ba zi, right? There's also a, a, a lady who actually talk about health uh, health products and all this. So all from different walks of life, right? So how do you usually help them to increase their chances of success in their own business journey? Increase the chances of success. Mm. Okay, so the framework that I have, right, is kind of like a... Remember I said that, you know, business is really about a process. So mm. it's about um, finding your strengths, finding... Uh, understanding your weaknesses, you know, um, understanding basically yourself, then launching, uh, testing your phone, testing the market for the idea that you have, mm -hmm. and then after that, building your product. Um, I think that there is always, okay, the most important thing, right, is actually reaching out to people. At the end of the day, right, 
you have to reach out to people to be able to sell your product. Mm. And that's the only way that you can actually make uh, more wealth in that sense. Um, so for different students, right, there are different barriers that they face. So for, for students that are very uh, sociable and sales-oriented to begin with, um, this the starting process is actually a lot easier for them because they are just using the templates and basically, you know, like uh, executing them. Mm. For students, for those that tend to be a little bit more um, apprehensive or perfectionist, um, they would end up trying to like perfect their product or um, they feel very uh, they feel a resistance to reach out to people mm. in fear of potentially being rejected or you know being ignored. Mm. Um, but the thing here is that you in life you will always uh, have to face rejections and you will some most times get ignored. Mm. Um, so the templates that I actually provide is really adjust, copy and paste, send, and then after that, don't look until someone replies. And if someone mm -hmm. replies negatively and you feel sad about it, chat GPT and ask chat GPT to tell you how to respond positively to the person and then end it there. Mm. So ultimately, right, what I'm trying to say here is that regardless the industry of the business, the most important thing here is that you kind of need to just reach out. It's not so much about like showing face or not showing face. Mm. It's just sending out that message of uh your product and your offering, basically your offering. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I, I know like um to people, why some of them feel very apprehensive is because to many people, this word, right, S, right, sales is like a taboo word. And then people feel like, oh, I don't want to sell, you know, like, oh, I think I, I, if I do that, I'll become very pushy, I'll become very salesy. So how do you help your students to overcome that? Like, like, like how do you change their perspective and mindset towards sales? Ah. Uh... Okay, before uh, Sabrina, while she think about this question, how many of you also feel this feeling towards sales. If you have the same feeling, can you type S in the chat, right? That you kind of felt like, I don't want to do sales. You know, it just make me look bad or maybe people will judge me for, for whatever reason. If you have this feeling, type S, okay? Ah, uh, okay. Whereas if Paul, Paul now is typing S, yeah, so Sabrina, how, how, how do we overcome that mindset? I think the way to overcome it is really to not think so much about it. Um, it's as simple as, you know, like when you hire an agency or, you know, you're doing your own advertisements, right? Um, you actually do not know who are the people that are going to be responding to it or even seeing it. Mm. And most, probably 90% of these people, right, you actually might not even meet in real life ever, uh, you know, uh, ever, mm. period. So, so it's not so much about being, you know, like, super thick skin, but it's more of like not being emotional about the action of taking the first step and taking that action point. Look at it more of like, this is a task, you know, copy and paste, and then just send it out. You know, it's just a process. Don't think of it too much as, uh, don't connect it on a personal level. Then you will probably not feel too emotionally affected by it or emotionally affected by it. Hmm. So would you advise like in order to prevent ourselves feeling too emotional attached to that, we don't sell to people who know us. For example, we we don't like, for example, when doing your coaching business, you will not ask, hey mom, can you join my coaching? Or hey sis, you want to join my coaching? You will not do that, right? <laughs> you, you will actually use online way, you know, reach out to people who you probably have not seen them before and they could be the one looking for solutions and that's how your, your solution provides the answer for them. Correct? Yes. And in fact, that is my method. I don't do, uh, I don't first start with warm audience. I actually start with cold, colder audience. Mm. So until, my, until now, I think my mom doesn't fully understand what I do and I try not to explain it too much as well. 
<laughs> okay, so there's always different ways. Um, because at the end of the day, right, like just like what Sabrina said, there's no one size fit all kind of strategy. It depends on you, right? If you really don't want to, you know, approach people that you know, you can use how Sabrina does it. Use cold, like basically all these are cold, cold leads. We call it cold leads. That means you don't know them. And they probably have not seen you before until they came across certain, some of your posts, some of your videos or social media advertisement and all this. And from there, they get into your entire, uh, 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 like your business funnel. And through the funnel, eventually they become your paid customer, right? That could be a way. And, and I also like how Ken is saying that he said, sales is actually about communicating your best solutions well. Because at the end of the day, I think how I changed my mindset towards sales is in the past, I was actually like, all of you guys typing SS just now, right? That I really hated sales. I shine away from sales because I thought that it's evil, um, that I don't want to bring myself to doing that. But eventually, I can't, I start to realize that actually sales is about providing the solution, right? If you don't want to buy, that means you are not my target audience, then I don't have to force you to buy at all because I want to make sure I always deliver the perfect product, the right product for you who need it. So if you think about it, right, whatever that offer that you come, come up with, for example, uh, the fidgeting toy, not every one of us have fidgeting issue, right? Then we are not the customer. But wh whoever who have the problem is looking for the solution. Imagine no one ever on earth come up with a fidgeting toy. These people are still facing the problem. Right, but because one person start to realize that hey, I can actually make a solution, and since I make a solution, I might as well learn to monetize it. Then eventually, he become very rich, and people who buy it also solve the problem. It's actually a win win situation. Yeah. So how many of you can see that already? If you can see that, can you type W W? Okay, W W means win win, and I think it's very true that you need to truly believe whatever things that you are providing is a solution for that target audience. Right then. It's a win-win situation for everyone, right? So fantastic. I can see all of you guys are seeing it right now. All right, how many of you are learning a lot so far from Sabrina sharing? If you are learning a lot, can you type learned in the chat? All right, so Sabrina, wow, I can see a lot of you guys learning a lot. I love that, I love that. And I also love how you guys think about, start to think about business, not just as an investor, right? Because as an investor, we want to accumulate our wealth through compounding. Time, will do its magic. So other time, actually most of the time is don't look at your portfolio often, right? The idea is don't look at it so that you let it come out. And other time, right? Use it to think creatively in other aspects, like doing a business or, or whatever things that you are passionate about that can actually generate you more income to help you to find your portfolio and compound it faster as well. And then that's what Sabrina, you have been doing that as well, right? <laughs> okay so uh yes you want to add something oh yeah i was gonna say that different different investment vehicles but definitely you know running the academy was so that i could have uh, i can generate extra income so that i can kind of like dump it into the you know uh, my investment portfolio and let it kind of like run on its own yeah yeah so that's how you have the all the business and the investor quadrant feel and you have more income coming in. Yeah. So uh, Sabrina, maybe uh, before we end of this, right, um, which later on, we, uh, Sabrina also have an announcement to make, right, that we are actually launching this project together, right? So for yourself, do you want to um, share with us what is your advice for people who aspire to become a business owner, what is your advice for them? If I had to become a business owner, what is my advice? Um, I think that if let's say you want to start your own business, number one is to um, really kind of think about what your your goal of starting a business is. Um, is it because of uh, monetary reasons or is it because of uh, you want to solve a problem for, for someone or is it because you have too much free time on your hands and you want to spend, spend it doing something fruitful. So there are many reasons why you want to start it. So understanding the, the objective of it helps you to craft a better uh, game plan and helps you to actually achieve your goal easier because there's different routes to take. Hmm. 
um, yeah, pretty much that is one of the things to kind of like uh, really think about because okay. I have started projects that are really for the sake of um, passion and no intentions of like, you know, like really uh, capitalizing on it. Whereas I also do have projects that are purely for capitalizing on. Yeah. Um, uh, so, okay, sorry. Yeah, I think there's just a short echo. Hold on. Okay, so wow. Uh, okay, so thanks, Sabrina, for coming here. I, I hope that you guys already learned a lot. And in fact, Sabrina and I are also in the process of uh, launching a program together to really help people to find out more about themselves and how to turn their passion into fortune. Sabrina, are you able to share a little bit more about it? Yes. Um. So this book. So if you are interested to actually find out, right, how to you know, like what we have shared so far, you know, understanding your strengths, the weaknesses, um, and also how to kind of like grow your um, database and how, you know, a database can actually help you monetize in different manners and ultimately how to kind of automate the entire process to kind of make it a little bit hands off, like how I ran my, uh, my, 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 my academy that I actually only spent less than four hours a week on it um then you should join the preview coming up this saturday where chloe will be sharing um about a lot of different tips and tricks and even um the most important part of which you can grow your uh, database and your personal branding as well um and chloe will share with you the link <laughs> Yeah, so uh, what Sabrina is saying is, okay, if you don't really understand what is database, basically it's how to grow your customer. So in order, to, uh, remember, right, if you want to create your own business, you want to make sure you have customers and eventually having customers who are willing and happy to buy from you, your solution. So we'll be sharing with you, basically, I've been learning from Sabrina for the past one year, how to do a business, right? And at the same time, I felt that I'm constantly learning a lot just by really having conversation with her, having her to guide through me the entire process. And I also want to share with you guys her way of thinking, right? Through my own word. And you know that I'm, I I think one of my strengths is I make things simpler, right? So that people who are have very, very new, uh, no background whatsoever, they can also understand, right? So this is actually happening in this coming Saturday, all right? I just put up the link inside the chat. So if you want to come and join our free two-hour masterclass, and during this free two-hour class, we will also share with you what are the things that you need to do if you want to start to really turn your passion into fortune, which I think Sabrina, she has done it again and again. And she has also guided me to do it as well. I will share with you what is my progress, right? As an entrepreneur, uh, since the beginning of the year, right? You can see whether is it something that you also want to take on, right? To turn your passion into fortune, right? So all you need to do is to click on the link over here. And in the meantime, okay, maybe I can also invite uh, Ken, right? For Ken, he himself, he is also an entrepreneur and over the years, he has grown a lot as an entrepreneur as well. And he has some important things that he also want to share with you to encourage you to get started in this journey. Okay, so I will pass the time to Ken. Okay, okay, guys. Okay, so if you can hear me. Hello, hello, everyone. Okay, so welcome entrepreneurs. Okay, so guys, let me let me tell you why entrepreneurship is something that you must try. Okay, so now if you already have a business idea, can you type I in the chat? If I don't have any idea, you just end means you have no business idea. Okay, so if you already have a business idea or you're already doing a business, type I in the chat for me. If you, if you, okay, so, okay, oh, you already have some business idea. Okay, what about other people? If you are completely new, you type N for new, you type N for you to have no business idea yet, okay? Uh, what, what is, uh, uh, okay, so new, okay, so some of you are new, some of you are, are uh, you already have a business idea. Okay, so guys, so now, I believe here, you, maybe you want to become a fully automated business like Sabrina, maybe you want to become uh, like me and Chloe, we have, a, we have our own idea, we have the best product, best solution, we want to share to the role that can change your life, investing, whatsoever, right? So now, if you have that little bit of entrepreneur spirit, right? Now, let me tell you, when you go into entrepreneurship, it's very, very interesting. You, 
Okay, so 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 true, true story, right? Before before I was working, then uh my uh I talked to the entrepreneurs and they they say like I asked the entrepreneur, my friend he's a, he sells entre, uh, he does a uh, Amazon best selling book whatsoever, fully automated business. He doesn't even worry about it. I see him at board games, I see him playing Pokemon Go all the time. He doesn't even worry how to build his business all the time, right? And then I, like I asked him like, hey, you know what what do you do during the daytime? My friend Nick, his name is Nick, and then he said I go surfing. I was like, what? We don't have to work. And he said, no. Then I asked him, hey, do you have to run ads? Do you have to worry about customers? And he said, no, I go surfing. He's like, what? Then he said, yeah, because I have a fully automated business on Facebook with generating me income. And I just hire like a CEO or, or a marketing team to do all the stuff for me. They report to me while I'm I'm on the beach, I'm doing surfing. So, so, so then I understood that a, a, a true entrepreneurship is where you can have a fully automated business. You just have to manage the people. You find the right people. Or you have an automated uh, sales funneling system that can actually uh, help you drive traffic, get more leads. So there, there, there are two questions you should ask yourself. Number one, can your business run without you? So I'm sure Sabrina is the expert on that. She can have a fully automated scale business. Then number two is, can your business grow without you? So guys, if you want to achieve these two things, join the preview. Go and join the preview and you'll find out the secret. And that's it. That's it. And, and me and Chloe are also uh, learning from Sabrina also. So yeah, if you have entrepreneurial spirit or if you want to try out uh, something you don't like your boss whatsoever, then definitely entrepreneurship is a very interesting path that you need to take. Uh, I think th thanks Ken for coming up to share as well uh, his own uh, inspiration from his friend Max. And that's why I can see that he's also very work working very hard in building up his own business as well, which same as me, right? I also want to make sure I can do well in my business. And I think like as I'm learning, I really want to learn from people who are a lot better than me. And that is actually none other than Sabrina. So I also feel very fortunate to be able to have her guide me throughout the entire process. And in fact, starting this entire journey together. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, so Kiam Xiong is saying that would there be another session? All right. So, uh, okay, for now, we have 15 uh, June. However, if you want to stay up to date of the future session, just uh, opt in first, just sign, sign up first because we will be updating you for the future session through the emails as well, right? As long as you, you sign up, then we'll know that you're interested in, we will keep you updated, All right? So now let me just quickly share screen on uh, when you go into this page, what will you see? So basically, uh, during these two hours, we are going to share with you entirely how we do it, right? Especially how Sabrina does it, how she unlocked millions of dollars through her passion. You can see a lot of businesses that she set up, she is passionate about, she see the problem inside and how she identified to become a solution to turn it into a million dollar business. So we'll share with you um, our MDA formula, right? MDA, each one of them sounds, uh, 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 represents a different system behind it. So we'll share with you step by step how we do it and how you can start to execute it on that as well. So just need to fill in your full name, your, your email, as well as your mobile number and just click the sign up button. And then after that, if you really cannot turn up for this upcoming Saturday, we will also update you for the future slot uh, when we confirm the next day, right? So uh, for myself, okay, I will be sharing with you during this Saturday because Sabrina, she is uh, not able to make it, but don't worry, all right? Just trust me, whatever things that I'm going to share with you, she has already guided me through. So this is exactly what her thought process is as well. Right? So maybe in the future, you will, she will have another session. She will be doing sharing. Okay, But uh, just before, before that, just make sure you come for this and to get started your learning journey as well. Right? So uh, after that, okay, I think that's all we have to share. These are some additional things that you will be learning during this two-hour uh, uh, two hour masterclass. All you need to do is go there and sign up. All right. So uh, on top of that, okay, let's see whether there's any additional questions Questions. Okay, I can see Wong said, I really like how you guys support each other. Thank you so much, Wong, for supporting us as well. All right, so uh, Sabrina, do you have any final things that you want to share before we wrap up this session? Um, I wanted to share that... Oh, wait, what? I think... you Are you muted or no? Yeah, I'm not. You um, are... You are... I cannot hear you yet. Can you hear me now? Oh, 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 I know why. Okay, because I, I, I muted myself. Okay, got it. You can say again. Yes. Can, can, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say that, you know, like, uh, what Ken said about, you know, how Ken was speaking, that energy, uh, that is the energy that I'm talking about that, you know, like, aspiring entrepreneurs or, you know, like, early entrepreneurs, that energy that is, that is very 
um, it's very motivating. It's yeah. very motivating. It's um, contagious. Yes, it is. Mm. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to share is that you know, like uh, the story that he shared about you know, uh, so, you know, like well, Nick. Well, his name Nick. 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 Correct. Yeah. So that is something that you know when you actually when you actually start a business and then um, you understand the processes of uh, how the business is run already, right? And after that, you start automating the different elements of the business itself, right? That is literally the kind of lifestyle that you can have. And that is one of the reasons why I started the, the, the academy. So other than academy, right, there are, of course, like I mentioned, you know, I also run other businesses. Um, but generally, like the academy and my uh, wellness business is run in that particular manner where I don't actually have to monitor, uh, monitor it day to day. It actually runs on its own because after running it for, uh, I think, like six months, um, a lot of the processes are kind of like repeat. So when, when an item in the process flow is on repeat, right, that are elements that you can kind of automate using systems or outsourcing to people so that you don't have to do it yourself. And once that happens, um, you basically uh, you basically can kind of like have a lot more free time to yourself. That's why, you know, like for the academy, I only spend like like four hours unless um there are people that book me for a coaching call. And because all I think all coaching calls as an opportunity to kind of suck energy you know suck that energy from from the students so that's why I find it very enjoyable um yeah so basically once you are able to fully automate your system right you can really have that that achieve that freedom of time well location like you literally can be anywhere and happiness because it's it's very I think the best satisfaction or gratification is when you build something and people are willing to pay you for it. And you are proud of your work as well, right? And people respect you for your work. I think that's the most amazing. Like you you get paid financially, you get enriched. At the same time, you're also enriching people's life. And that I think that's what business is about as well, right? So thank you everybody for being here. Okay, final question. Katie is asking, what type of MTBI will be best business partner for ENTJ person. If I'm not mistaken, we are both ENTJ. We are both, right? Yeah. So, um, I think the MBTI type, right? It, it, it kind of depends on like um what business you are in and what kind of people is required in that business. So ENTJs are generally very uh. They are social goal, they are very big picture, um, they are also more uh structured and uh a little bit more regimental. Um if let's say you are in the business of like doing uh let's say entertainment, then you probably want to find someone that is uh, also E type, N type, uh, maybe a F or P type with a P at, at uh a P at the end. Someone that is more um to some extent, a little bit more creative, a little bit out of the box. Because TJ types tend to be a little bit more um, structured and regimental. So sometimes it does cause us to not really think out of the box that much as compared to, you know, someone that is more of a uh, PF type. Yeah, but I don't think there is like a best yeah, uh, you know, a best type for a, a particular uh, MBTI um, because different people have also different skill sets, different backgrounds, different experiences. So me being an a ENTJ and, you know, Chloe being an ENTJ, we are kind of not exactly the same either. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's always about like leveraging each other's on their our strength and then see how can we complement each other's weakness. And I think it's almost... It's a little bit also finding a life partner. There's no best life partner, right? But how do you make the best out of it, right? How do you respect each other, cherish each other, and build a fulfilling relationship from there? I think that is also very, very beautiful in this journey as well. Yeah. So... 
thanks once again for everybody joining us all right it's almost like wow one, one hour and 15 minutes and you guys are still here learning all right so if you enjoyed today's session a lot can you type Aligato in the chat. Okay, I want to thank Sabrina for your precious time to be here. Thanks so much for all your wisdom and insights. And I think a lot of them have learned a lot. Wow, fantastic. I love that. I can see so many Aligato inside the chat. <laughs> right? So for those who have already signed up for our upcoming free two-hour masterclass, all right, make sure uh, do tune, uh, tune in at 10 a.m. this Saturday. All right, for those who really cannot join for some reason, then just still opt in first so that we can send you for the future update. As well all right so with that okay i will see you guys in our next sharing and thanks once again for joining us and hope you guys learn a lot from it i will see you in the next video Aligato. thank you so much sabrina have a great evening ahead thank you everybody bye bye